Hey guys, in this part two of our Motion Live tutorial series, we're going to talk a bit more about capturing specific hand gestures, the rotational axis of your hand motion, as well as how you can refine your captures. Let's start off by introducing the optimal hand pose. What you want to do is make sure you reach ahead with your hands above the device, with the palms of your hands parallel to the table that your device is sitting on. Pretty simple stuff. From there, let's take a little preview. You can see that the two models on the screen have noticeably different initial poses. However, when we preview, your character's forearm will move relative to the joint positioning of the elbow, keeping with the physical restrictions of general human joint movement. In these images, you can see why. Moving your forearm side to side while still parallel to the sensor surface will rotate along the red x-axis with the elbow as your pivot point. Your forearm will rotate along the blue z-axis when you bring it closer to or further away from the sensor. Finally, twisting your arm so your palms are facing upward will rotate along the green y-axis. It basically means that unless your initial pose is really bizarre, then your arm movements will follow that of general human capability. Let's take a look now at layering hand gesture recording onto an eye motion that's already been applied to your character. Here you can see two animated models. The only difference is that the one on the right has a leap motion capture blended into the original. Let's repeat the process for the model on the left. To get started, I'm going to use the motion layer editor to put my character's forearms into what I call the lecture position, which makes it easy for us to just add a bit of random arm motion to make it seem like he's speaking and gesturing at a lecture. Notice that it's the same pose as our initial capture pose with Leap Motion. From there, let's launch Motion Live, connect with Leap Motion, and preview our dummy's hands. You can see the results here. Notice that there is one eye motion looped in the timeline for now. If you want to record over top of the initial eye motion in real time, all you need to do is make sure you're at frame 1 and hit record. What will happen then is all your gestures will be recorded and then blended into a single clip, which will replace the loop clips we had earlier. If we play back, you can see the blended results. Let's check out hand mode now, where only the hand gestures will be captured. So here we need to select hand from the control drop down menu and preview. Now what our hand model Fred is doing is rotating his palms up and making a fist before the next preview. You can see that upon preview, our model's hands will snap to the same position, meaning that the hand mode is an absolute method. Your character's hands will snap to the position of your own in the capture preview. Let's do some more layering of motions, this time with only a hand capture blended into an existing motion. We can drag the green project length indicator to the same length as our original motion clip to ensure that upon our preview, it will only loop for the duration of that motion clip. This is a useful tip for when you want to target a particular motion clip for blending. So once again, we'll head back to frame 1 and record some brief jazz hands movement with our hands and blend it into the original. You can see the result when we play back. Finally, let's refine it down to finger movement. Finger mode is also an absolute method, which will remove the original finger poses when the preview or recording starts, and replace them with your initial finger position when your capture begins. This time in control mode, you'll want to select the fingers and give it a preview. Let's record the finger movement and blend it into this dance clip. It may be useful sometimes to adjust the speed of your original clip if you want to make it easier to time your finger gestures correctly. In this case, I'm reducing the speed of my original clip so I have more time when layering my finger gestures on top. It just makes it easier sometimes for active response when doing the finger performance. You can take a couple of tries at previewing to get your timing right and then give it a record. Disclaimer here. Some of us may be better finger dancers than others. Once you've finished your recording and the finger data is blended in, you can then restore your clip to the original speed by shortening it once again. 
In this next part, we're going to take a look at recording and saving eye hand motions. In the Animation tab of your Content Manager, you'll find some embedded hand gestures in the Gesture folder. You can add your own custom hand motions or poses easily using the Motion Live plugin. Since an eye hand motion only saves the motion data of the fingers, we need to make sure that we have fingers selected in the control mode before we begin. Here we're just recording some simple finger movement. Nothing special, but as you can see, my character's right hand is a bit off, and I didn't put it into a completely correct fist. However, I'm happy with the left hand for now. If this happens, you can easily mask out the data capture of the one hand and run through the recording again for only one of the hands. To do this, we'll switch the hand mapping for the left hand to none, meaning that this time around there won't be any capture for the left hand, and the right hand will be recorded alone and blended into the original capture. So as you can see with the character's left hand, I've made a fist, and with the right hand I've made a pointing gesture. Now if you want to save those hand movements as an eye hand motion, all you need to do is click and drag in the Collect Clip track for the duration that you want to save out. From there, just right click on the selected area and select Save Gesture to Library. Once you do that, it will then be saved to your Gestures folder under the Custom tab. Let's try to apply it to this animation of Curve Man here. He could use some help with his fingers. Notice that when we apply the animation, the data will be split into separate right and left hand gesture subtracts. This means that you can manipulate the clips from each hand separately. Here I'm just repositioning them both to get the timing right according to the motion on the screen. Just like with the Collect Clip feature on other motion data, you can capture multiple eye hand gestures from the same capture. Here you can see I have a clip where I have multiple gestures in the same recording. All I need to do to capture separate gestures is click and drag in the Collect Clip track whichever area of the timeline contains the animation I want to capture. After that, the procedure is the same. Just right click to add the gesture to the custom library and name it whatever you want. Finally, let's take a look at applying all those hand gestures to a dancing motion that we've already loaded up here. Just like with the other motion clips, you can loop and adjust the speed of the data from each hand however you wish, as well as change their position on the timeline to coordinate the timing with your body animation. It's a great idea to have a library full of your own custom hand gestures created with Motion Live so that you can quickly apply them whenever you need in future projects. That's about all I want to cover in this tutorial. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot, and as always, make sure to check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com, and I hope to see you in the next video.